Okay, and with that, this is a podcast, for the most part, with no guests. It can't be all about me. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Okay, Cigar Bar Dreams. Hey, Bill, chunky but funky burr. Oh, Jesus, I love the fat shaming. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Uh, I'm writing over in England and heard, heard on your previous podcast your dream to own a cigar bar. I have this dream and think England doesn't have many low-key cigar bars other than the super posh places in London. Question is, what makes a good cigar bar and what would you call yours? Well, I'm not going to give up the name. Um, If I ever do, I will name a bourbon cocktail served in a large glass called the Oversized Ginger. (laughs) In your honor. In your spelt honor rung, you dumb fuck. Thanks for being you and go fuck yourself. Cheers. Um... I call him a dumb fuck because I can't even read a number earlier in the podcast. Uh, What makes a good cigar bar? Well, obviously, the selection. The location. It's got to be easy to park. Uh, The selection of cigars has to be fucking top notch. Um, Also, if there's a chance to get I don't know, booze. Booze becomes a whole other thing. I wouldn't say booze because then you get drunks there. I never really noticed that. You go to a cigar bar, everybody's just sort of chilling. It's got to have a chill vibe. You got to have nice, comfortable seats. Your staff has to be like knowledgeable of the cigars and they got to be cleaning out the ashtrays uh, quickly. All right? Uh, You got to have some sort of fucking... Those cigar bar games that they have. What are the, I, don't, I never played them. What's the one where you roll the dice and you move in those checkers? Maybe some games like that. Um, and then a nice fridge where you sell some soda pop. Like I like, you know, the real shit. The Fanta with the, the Mexican Fanta and the Mexican Coke that has the real fucking sugar in it. And uh, root beer. Bottled waters. Something there for the ladies. Just a nice chill, you know. You got the game on. You got to have the flat screens. I'm not going to tell you anything you don't know. Indoor, outdoor pa- uh, options. Um, and then the location, man. If there's a good place to get some, you know, you strike up a good uh, relationship with the people next door. People can order food and actually bring it in. There's a whole bunch of ways to go. I mean, I don't know. And don't play it loud. Don't be, make it loud and sexy because then douches are going to show up. Um, and it's just going to have, you know, that W hotel vibe. You know that with a fucking beautiful people, you know, with the aquarium lighting. Don't have that. Have it be like a nice, chill fucking place. Um, that's it. I really think so much of it beyond the cigar selection is the vibe. And if you go in there, you got a nice smoke eater. So everybody can smoke inside and you're not fucking sitting there, you know, like you're fighting a fire. Um, you know, and then who knows? Maybe you got some uh, other options in the back, if you know what I mean. That maybe come from a particular place. Oh, well, Cuban cigars are legal where you're at, right? So you could have those right out in front. Um, I would say that. I would say that. That would be it. I don't know. It was kind of basic. I didn't really have anything interesting to say, did I? Yeah, because I don't want to give you my ideas. I got a whole fucking bunch of ideas for it. Um, but that's the basics, I would say. And it seems if you live out in the middle of no, yeah, I wouldn't want to make it posh, as you say. The W Hotel type of vibe. So you got to be like, you know, wearing cufflinks and be super rich. You know, and that just really attracts asshole guys and loud, douchey women who have never been told to shut their yaps. You don't want that. You know? You want those lifer cigar bar guys to be coming in. Um, All right. Cable news. Dear Billy Network. Who would have thought I'd get so much fucking attention over one stupid comment? I'm a huge fan of yours and have seen you live at least a half a dozen times in the last 15 years. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Are you talking about cable news and how evil it is all the time? I have worked at two of the major three cable news networks. Uh Uh-oh. We got an insider here. And I just want to tell you that you are correct. Yes! 
How often do you hear that? You are correct, sir. I entered the news industry as a naive journalist who thought news was news, but soon came to realize that it's all selective coverage. Yeah, that's why when you talk to people who listen to Fox News and people listen to CNN, it's like they're living in two different countries. Uh, Really interesting stories with dynamics and huge world implication. Hey, look who's here. Did you bring my baby boy out here to say goodnight to? Oh, he's making his first appearance on the podcast. Oh, my God, he's so heavy. Huh? It's because he's jacked. How are you, buddy? How are you doing? You just looking around? Has he even been in here? I don't think so. That's why he's looking around. Say hello to the people. There you go. (laughs) He thinks, can you say ball? Ball? Can you say Ball? Are you getting all shy like the frog and on the uh, Bugs Bunny show? All right. I love you, buddy. Mwah. I'll see you in the morning, okay? Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. You say bye-bye? Uh-huh. You say bye-bye? No, this is too, all, too many new interesting things to look <laughs> at in here. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. You say bye-bye? Bye-bye, Dada. Oh, well. Huh? He'll do it as we're walking out. I know. He will. All right. What a cutie. All right, sweetie. I'll see you in a minute, all right? I'm wrapping. The, I mean, I'm on the second half here. Um, anyway, I say agenda without a... Let me go back to here so I, I get... Really interesting stories with dynamics and huge world implications couldn't be further from their agenda. I say agenda without exaggeration. Yeah, I mean, it's basically the vision of the, two, of the, the guy that owns the news network. You know, which media has always been that way. That's why you need rules limiting the ownership and the influence. Um, I mean, you had half the country thinking that COVID wasn't real, the other half saying it was real. I mean, and nobody could get on the same fucking page. We're still not on the same page because of these two cunts um, that own these networks, I think. I'm I'm probably oversimplifying it. I know there's other problems, but... um, All right, here we go. It's very clear what the goal is every day. It's not about letting the public know what's going on. It's about publishing the public uh, to back one or of two sides. You can imagine how frustrating it is reading the news, but imagine being on the inside and seeing how hopeless it is. Yeah, that sounds depressing. Needless to say, I left the world and started my own business a year ago. Thanks for the free podcast. Go fuck yourselves. Now, I want to ask the people that actually watch CNN and Fox News. All right. Did this mean anything to you? I mean, this person could have made that up. Who knows if they work there or not, but does it give you pause? I'll tell you, I was at the gym and they had CNN on and like I had almost a panic attack within fucking five minutes of, of looking at it. I'm like, dude, I can't, I come here to, to like feel good. You know, they just scream in fire in a crowded movie theater every fucking two seconds. Anyway, naming names. Yo, Billy Bond. Uh, you've had a don't name names policy for a while now. You leave names out of stories all the time. I was wondering, if you were to name the people you complain about, how much would that affect your career? I have to believe not so much, aside from a few less invites to a shitty panel show that you're already not doing. Thanks, and fuck off yourself. Uh, no, just in general. A lot of times when I tell stories, like, you know, something crazy happened. And I feel like, you know, you need consent. So I, I change where it happened and, you know, what, you know, not what happened, but where it happened or whatever. But I, um, why is my fucking, my fucking computer screen is blinking like an old TV all of a sudden. Not oh, Jesus. It's just because I'm trashing fucking social, uh, not social media, major uh, news channels. Uh, yeah, I just don't, I don't do that shit. Listen, I know that you guys are now, you guys are are like the fucking rat generation. Everybody's just trying to rat everybody out and and end their ability to make money and and all of this shit. I don't want to fucking do that to anybody. You know what I mean? If somebody's really doing something bad, I feel like the cops are going to show up. There's lawyers, there's, there's, there's other ways of doing it. There's a whole fucking real system that exists outside of social media. I would, you know, my shit is like, if I got a problem with somebody, I go to them and I fucking work it out. If it's at another level, I'd go to the cops. 
But uh, I'm not going to fucking be, you know, telling stories of shit that I've done with people that, you know, might make them look in a certain way. And also when I comment on people saying shit on social media, I don't become part of the problem and say their fucking names. I, that's, I don't understand chiming in on a fucking story when I wasn't there. And somebody's livelihood is, is at stake. I get if you were there and you tried to go to some authorities and nobody fucking listened, then I get it. But, you know, if I wasn't there, well, well, I'm not going to fucking weigh in on either side. I think that makes sense, doesn't it? Why is my screen fucking blinking? Oh, Jesus. Okay, England's so-called fans. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here we go. Somebody's going to shoot one across the bow here. Hey, Billy Belly Bulge. Oh, you motherfucker. It's so true. England is a shit country with shit fans. All right. This sounds like it's fucking open-minded. How many ways did England fans act like complete asshole hooligans? It's hard to keep track. Here's a few. Well, I did see them when they were fucking beating on those poor Italian fans just coming in to watch a game. Booing opposing team's national anthem. They did do that. Laser pointers at the opposing goalie. I didn't know they did that. Oh, wow. Crashing the gate at Wembley. Yeah, what is with that? I got to tell you, England, this is what happens when your cops don't have guns. (laughs) Beating up at the Italian fans before and after the game. Yeah, that's, that's so fucking weak. Fucking 10 on one. The fuck are you doing? Tearing apart fan zones throughout London. I don't even know what that means. Smashing bottles, destroying property, ripping up trees. It's, what did the fucking tree do? Breaking into the na- National Gallery. I don't even know what that is. The disgusting racist remarks towards their own players. Congratulations and go Italy and England. Go fuck yourself. Um... This little gem of a pick is what this place is like in a nutshell. Yeah, it's somebody with a fucking firework shooting it out of his asshole. Uh, well, I mean, I don't think all English fans are like that. And I also don't think everybody in Italy is the same, same way in America. We all, have, we all have our issues. And then individually, we all have our issues. You know, some days you wear the white hat. Some days you wear the black hat. Some days you're a good person. Some days you're a fucking asshole. As long as you're working on yourself and you you own up to your mistakes, you apologize. I mean, I think that's how an adult behaves. I I just don't understand doing any of that. Why would you go destroy your own city? Why would you boo an opposing team's national anthem? Why would you want to win because you're doing the laser pointer thing? Why would you do that shit? Ah, That's because you're a fucking animal. All right. Yeah, I can't argue with any of that stuff, but I, I would be, uh, I, wouldn't you say that most, you know, sports, uh, what would you say, uh, fan bases have those types of people? You know what I mean? As a Boston fan, I know we do. We absolutely do. It's fucking disgusting. But, uh, and then, of course, that's what they show on the fucking news. So I know you're... Going after the morons. I don't think... I would be willing to say 90% of soccer fans in England aren't like that. Uh, It's just the select few. I mean, that's a great way to fucking clear people out of your population. You have your team lose a major championship on a penalty kick. And then you just wait for that reaction and then you just wipe out all of those people and everybody who stayed home and didn't write anything bad Jesus Christ Bill what are you going Hitler on us here you're going to decide who you're going to fucking you're coming up with your own final solution for sports I don't know what I'm doing here whatever this is what happens when you talk to yourself too long all right Mexican stereotype hey Billy Bob Borton Borton oh like I'm boring you (laughs) you motherfucker uh I'm a 29-year-old Mexican-American tax accountant from San Diego. Oh, you're living in God's country. San Diego. That's like L.A. without the traffic. It's super chill. I love San Diego. And your podcast helps me plow through the endless amount of Excel spreadsheets, book-to-tax, reconciliation, 
and procrastination, procrastinating clients that wait until the last week of tax season to provide their documentation. Isn't that something? Then they just dump their dirty dishwater in your lap. You're a saint, wreaking havoc to my mental sanity time and time again. But I digress. So I recently went to a friend's birthday reunion uh, where she also invited a few people that I had not had the pleasure of meeting before. Everything was going nice and dandy. Went out of the fucking blue. A mildly drunk blonde lady, he said dame, or lady approached the table and sat next to me to engage in a a seemingly polite conversation. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, what could go wrong here? You're in San Diego, some beautiful blondes talking to you. You're being chill. You're not bringing any negative energy towards yourself. What could happen? We discussed what we did for a living, backgrounds and all the basic, that basic stuff. As we were talking, she began inching closer, little by little, reaching the point where she casually rested her palm on my leg as we were sitting talking. As she got closer and closer, I sensed the pungent whiff of tequila and vodka that they were passing around to then realize that she was pretty much hammered. When arriving to this realization, I quickly disengaged and moved over to some other friend's table. Well, aren't you a gentleman? As the night went up forward, look at this. You did, you did the right thing. You were raised right. As the night went forward, one of my friends dropped a bowl full of chips, and I quickly reached over for a broom to help clean up the mess. And oh, no. And out of nowhere, the drunk blonde chick appeared from behind and aggressively took the broom off of my hands and then yelled, Oh, no. I will not keep alive the Mexican cleaning guy stereotype. Let me take care of it. Oh, God. Oh, my God. As soon as the words came out of her mouth, everyone in the room went, went silent, and I was the only one laughing. I actually thought it was funny. I, yeah, I can see why. I, as a white person, it's embarrassing. The moment she left the party... I had numerous people approach me and apologize for her comment when I truly did not see what was the big deal. Up to the point, you know, it's white guilt. It's white guilt because all of them probably had Mexican people doing something over their house as they act like they're good parents. Um, I truly did not see what the big deal was up to the point where all of these people made me question myself if I should have been offended or not. No, that's up to you. That's up to you. But you got to understand the way the world is now. We're all just like, ah, not the woke douche. And you're also an accountant and she's coming over just being like, why should the Mexican guy sweep up? Yeah, that's a lot. I, I can see why people were uncomfortable. He said, I, should, I believe we should all be able to dish it and take it at the same time. People nowadays find offense uh, whenever being the butt end of a joke. Is this one of those situations or was that not cool to say? Well, if you thought it was fine, then I guess it's fine. But it's like, you know, it's also not a level playing field. So, you know, I don't know. No matter, I, I really feel like as a white person, no matter how you react in that situation, you're going to be wrong. Like, how could you just let her say that? Or then why did you feel the need to apologize? Uh, looking to forward to your take on this. Thanks. And go fornicate yourself. Um, I'll be honest with you. Uh, back in the day, when I grew up, that is something that you would say and everyone would fuck it. Actually, people would, say, would have said worse than that. Uh, I'm not saying racial slurs, but the jokes would have been way more fucking the way the, you know, the way it used to be. Uh, I'd say a nice Archie Bunker type of thing. I still love jokes like that. But when you get into a public place and everybody has cameras and everybody's just waiting to film somebody saying something fucked up. Uh, but no, I don't think you're, re- I mean, your reaction is your reaction. So I don't know what to tell you on that. I thought you were going to be like, I thought you were going to get upset. So I think I'm part of those. I mean, there's no fucking way I would have gone up to you and apologized for her. I mean, I probably would have yelled something at her. Ah, go home, you fucking drunk. I would have said something like that. But, uh, you know, there's a big pressure night now to be, to, to be, a white person and pretend like you care. That's all it is, you know? And that's like minimal work. 
you know, those white people could actually be down at the border protesting why those children are in cages. Or they could just go up to you and be like, oh, my God, my heart breaks for what she just said to you. I did my good white person thing for the day. <laughs> and then they could walk away. I don't fucking know. I don't live in that world, sir. So I, I, don't, I don't know what to fucking tell you. Uh, all I can tell you is I wish people brought you your, their tax shit, you know, you know, not on April 13th or whatever the fuck it is that they do. You know, rip the fucking Band-Aid off. Just bring it to them in February and in March. They'll get it done. You're going to know way, what way you stand with Uncle Sam and the bankers that fucking make him walk the block like a fucking old prostitute. Um, there you go. Underrated. Overrated. Underrated. Getting your taxes in and done. And just letting them take, take a bite out of your ass or get your fucking refund, whatever the fuck you have coming to you. Getting that out of the way as opposed to just waiting to the last second um, is definitely underrated. All right. Well, that is the podcast, everybody. Uh, I want to thank all you guys for listening. As always, uh, as always, go fuck yourselves. I want to thank you guys for the fat shaming. I love it. I guess this is where I can bond with this uh, Mexican-American guy here, where, I, you know, where some people would find it offensive. I fucking love it, and I find it motivating. Um, so keep the fat shame and coming. But I tell you, you only got a couple weeks left, okay? Because I looked at I, my body mass index, and it said when I get down to 173, I will just be in shape. You know, for some reason at my height, you can be 129 to 173, I don't know what kind of bird bones you have or if you're running behind the dumpster every five fucking seconds chewing and spitting, whatever the fuck it is you're doing. I don't know how you get down to 129. That might be for like women, you know, certain wafy women. Why? How come you could be 173 and a woman can't? I'm not saying that. Abigail, I'm not saying that. I don't give a fuck. It's your fucking butt. Do whatever the whatever weight you think you look good at. Do that. I don't give a shit. It's not up to me to make you feel good. Go fuck yourself. I'm literally yelling at somebody who isn't even there right now. All right, that's it. Go fuck yourselves. I'll check in on you on Thursday.